Steve, hi. How have you approached this week and the team selection? For some, it's often talked about as a week too far, but what are the driving motivations? It's very simple. The driving motivation is we want to win on Friday night against a very good Argentina side. I think this squad has built and progressed through the tournament. We want to continue that progression. And you've, you've made quite a few changes. What's your thinking? Yeah, I think there's a uh, return to fitness of uh, Marcus Smith unavailable last week. Um, I think looking at all the players after this will be our second six day turnaround in a row after some pretty intense games. So I think there's been a need to um, make some alterations to ensure we have the energy intensity we require against a, a strong, t strong opposition we're going to face. Regardless of whether you win or lose this game, do you still consider it to be a successful World Cup campaign? I think I'll, I'll review the World Cup campaign as a whole post this weekend. Um, right now, I want to make sure that we get the performance and the result we want on Friday night. It could be the end of an era for some of the players. Um, is that a driving motivation for, for the guys this week as well, to go out on a high? I think all the players... Um, want to produce a top quad points every time they go on the pitch in an England shirt. Uh, it's quite right to say that there's a couple of players that, that um, are not going to be with the England team going forward and they've already come out publicly and, and said that. And I think that, that, that clearly we want to make sure that this is our last game as a team for a period. I want to make sure that it is a performance that is fitting of, of what we think we, we, we started to build and progress over these last few weeks. Have any other players come to you and said, this will be my last game for England, or my last week with England? No. Can I just get a word on Ben Youngs and his contribution through the years, 13 years, 120-odd caps, you, obviously a man you know very well. Yeah. Uh, ben has been a, a tremendous player for English rugby for such a long time. Our, our record cap holder, uh, test appearances, um, a player who has seen a lot, been four World Cups, and um, I think has played an important role so within this squad, this World Cup on helping, particularly Alex Mitchell, helping the team progress through this tournament. So uh, I think a, a guy who's a brilliant player and a fantastic team man. And how is Tom Curry coping with all the noise that's going on around him? Yeah. Um, from my point of view, uh, Tom Curry has been his preparation this week. He's been the ultimate professional. He, he always is. Every single, every single day, every single week. That's that's my view on Tom. Yeah, I, I can I come in on that as well. Just from personally, I, as, as Steve's already said, he's he's been first class like he always is this week. Um, but what? What isn't understandable is the amount of abuse he's got. Um, the the effect that that has not just on him as well is 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 the bit that I that I and we I don't think really don't understand. And um, I know it seems to be going more and more like this, but it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. Steve? I think it will be real clear. This is, this is not. A, it's right you to ask about Tom Curry. This is not a Tom Curry incident. Somebody has said something in a game that he has reported, and he's getting on with preparing. Now, the, um, this is a world rugby and SA rugby matter to be de dealing with. Not an England rugby. Not a Tom Curry matter. This is SA rugby, a world rugby matter now. Would it help you if World Rugby owned this and were a bit more yeah. transparent? You understand? We, we've said we want to say on the matter. This is there, there to deal with. We've got a game Friday night, which we're looking forward to, and, and Tom Curry's looking forward to, and every one of the England squad, players, management, we're all looking forward to. Finally then, just Owen, your motivations for this game? As I mentioned, the end of the road for a few players, is that something you've discussed this week? Well, we've got plenty of motivation. Um, everywhere you look, it seems, it seems like we have. Um, so, as, as Steve has said, we're, we're, looking forward, we're looking forward to this game, and um, it, should be, it should be a good one. Um, we want to make sure we want to make sure we do we do the the England fans proud again. Hopefully, so um, yeah, we're looking forward to it. Hi guys, um, just on the Tom Curry abuse side of things. Um, Owen, you said obviously you don't don't understand why it comes to that. Um, I completely understand where you're coming from. Can you just talk a bit more about the effect that it does have on coaches and players? I suppose the way social media is. It's 
sort of almost impossible to ignore. It gets gets raised, doesn't it? But it's also something that no one should have to deal with for obvious reasons. Yeah, well, we've we've kind of just said just said a bit there, and there's not there's not really too much to say on, other than um, you're dealing with people, you're dealing with human beings, and um, just because you're saying stuff on your phone or behind a computer screen doesn't make doesn't make it acceptable. And um, yeah, I think I think as I said just before that is it seems to be going more and more like this way, isn't this way? And um, I don't think it's acceptable. And Steve, you said he's the ultimate professional, the strength of his character to continue to be that when there is this going on, which is obviously outside of your camp, but it is there, isn't it? That just probably just underlines again why he's such an important figure and player in your squad. Yeah, certainly. And mm. all I can do is echo Owen's words. Um, the captain of the England rugby team has just put it, I think, really, really well. Can I ask about... Courtney Laws, obviously, he said to us after the the, the semi final that you know yeah. he, he will retire after the, from Test rugby after the World Cup, and yeah. you know, um, can you just explain his impact on this group and his impact on English rugby across the course yeah. of his long career? I think this this week, as we've debriefed last weekend's game, and we're using clips of of Courtney of things done so well things exactly what we wanted to do Courtney the way he moves the way he runs the way he hunts for every loose ball he chases down attackers pulls them back in when he seems like he has no right to do it but Courtney manages to do it somehow and that that hunger and fight that he has within him uh, the, the pride to to help his team is is what I saw years ago when he first joined the England team a long time ago and I've seen it Right, right till to, to to last weekend's game. He's been he's been tremendous and continues to be tremendous in the way he's helps the, helping the team this week. And, and can I ask Ben? I uh, was talking yesterday about the responsibility on players who will take it forward to almost set the tone for a new era on Friday, as well as obviously clearly going out to win this win this match. How important is that? That you, you there's a dual opportunity there, isn't there? For because obviously a lot of you guys will will, will continue and. Yeah, and I think a lot to think about. Obviously, it's not immediately the the ambition, is it? But there's a lot a lot to come. Moving, moving on. Yeah, I think that responsibility that you're talking about there's always there. Uh, every every single time you play for England, uh, and I don't. I've I've always remembered it as as being that, and I think it always will be. Um, so so yeah, it's it's another opportunity. It's another opportunity to represent England, which I think the boys have done brilliantly over the past. However many weeks now, and um, yeah, it's a it's a great chance to do it again. I mean, you said you're not short on motivation this week. I'm mean, just interested in how you've managed to turn the the pain of last weekend in, in, into something that will drive you. It's, you're used to having to lose games, but it so clearly affected so many players so deeply, just visibly on the field in tears and and, and that kind of thing. What have you said? How, as a squad, have you managed to convert that into into fuel? Well, first of all, the, the programme's been managed in a way that's that's appropriate to, for this game, for players to be able to recover and um, and and be in the best the best shape they can be by the end of the weekend. Um, and then, secondly, it's about again you're dealing you're dealing with individuals, you're dealing with you're dealing with people, and um, it was, we were just talking about it before. Actually, it's like. Is now now when it's come towards the end of the week and you start getting back to you start getting together and you're out there on the training field and you're you're in the team room and think this you start getting you start getting that bit of energy um, you start looking forward to, to what's coming up you start talking about um, looking forward to to Friday night and uh, I've certainly felt that as 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 the week's gone on um, and hopefully that now builds into a, a lot of excitement come Friday. Steve, obviously you're not going to plan for a third minute sending off, but how different a game do you think this will be from the first game and how, how much do you think Argentina have developed through the tournament? Yeah, well, I think you see a, a, a change in both teams. I think both teams have, have developed over a number of weeks, a number of games. Argentina in particular, you've seen the, they've developed this uh, long kicking game. They're, 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 they've really used to, to great effect, particularly in the quarter final where kick the ball almost from one end of the field to the other to then um, force the opposition into errors in, in, in their 
part of the field. So you've got to combat that. I think that then the, the, they've then developed uh, some phase attack game within what they're doing that was a little bit different to what they did last time we played against. We played against them. And so I think with that, as ever, both teams will spend more time and play more games together. Um, so I think it's it's a different contest to the one that was played in game one of the World Cup. All right. Um, just going back to the the online abuse, um, it, it seems to be just part of everyday life now, particularly in professional sport, that anything happens, there's this pile on online you, you've been subjected to as well. Is there any, is there any answer to this? Uh, is there anything that players can do? Is there anything in, it would be thoughts of turning away from social media and not engaging with the public in future if it continues? <laughs> have, have you had a chance to think about that? Oh, that's that's. I don't think something for us us to come up with. Um, I think there's, there'd be there'd be people who know what to do about it more than more than there would be me. Um, be able to advise us on that. And again, every, everybody's different. Uh, yeah, it, it doesn't. It doesn't make me look look fondly on it. Um, look fondly on engaging with people outside of outside of the people that that um, are close to you. It doesn't make me look fondly on doing that. No. I guess a little bit of a follow up to that, Stephen. In terms of how Tom is this week, and I guess the easy option made, might have been not to pick him or he, he would have asked to stand down given the spotlight and I know this is not an England rugby thing but was that ever a consideration and I suppose secondly how is he coping with it and is he getting sort of has he had to get extra support maybe from yourself or you know someone who's been through uh, this sort of experience so if I deal with the first part, the, the the question about the performance side, and perhaps you might want to pick up how other aspects of it. The um, I chatted to Tom early in the week, and it was very much around the, how he's physically, um, because the way Tom plays, and we all see it, he um, has more involvement than any other player on the pitch. He and their physical power of powerful involvements. And I think everybody saw he, he, he come, came off that pitch uh, when I took him off on Saturday night, and yeah, he was caught and blooded, and it's exactly the way Tom Curry plays. So I chatted to him and about how he was physically in the levels. It's another six-day turnaround, and the, he looked straight at me and point blank said, "I am desperate to play on Friday, uh, Friday night. This is a guy who wants to play." And I said, "Right, there's no, there's no doubt in my mind." <laughs> This guy's this guy wants to be out there on Friday night, and the way he's, he's prepared himself through the week has been incredible, superb, and not special. That's Tom Curry. He is he is the way he does it every single week. Um, so I can be more proud of him from that side. Yeah, it's similar from a from a personal point of view, is is um, one of the most honest, most hard working. Uh, blokes that I've ever I've ever played with, um, and in terms of in terms of what you said about uh, getting uh, support, I guess I, I hope he knows that everybody close to him supports him and, and backs him and backs him all the way, and I'm sure he does. I'm sure the people that that uh, are close to him, I hope they know that that he's being supported really well as well. And I guess, is there, um, I don't know if there's any danger that this affects the performance or the sort of the mental approach of the side. Is there an extra motivation for, I don't know, if, there's, if it has any impact at all about how the this, this team is mentally going into the game? I think one, I'd, I'd reinforce Owen's words, this team's got lots of motivation. Um, and so from... Well, internally, this mo the motivation, and I'll say, Owen said we want to make sure we do the, fo the fans proud again this weekend. Um, I think the 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 way this team has gone about, the, the way it thinks in high pressure moments. I think we've seen evidence of development of that through this tournament. You've seen the team being in some tough spots. And you mentioned the, the early red card, I think, was mentioned. We've seen the team down on the scoreboard, the team um, and finding a way back. We've seen have been in the lead and then that lead get clawed back and the team has responded in a real calm, clinical manner. So I think from uh, the way the team thinks, I think uh, 
we've seen a lot of development there. Just finally, for me, in terms of how uh, getting over the pain of, of the defeat last weekend and maybe looking forward now to the Six Nations isn't going to be far away. Like, do, where, where have you got to emotionally with... Um, can you wait? Can you not wait for January, or you know, do you, is this the next stage, or um, is this about finishing this journey? I think um, I was the same as, uh, and you might want to give your, your thoughts. I was the same as a player when you had a defeat, especially one the nature of Saturday night is um, if you could run back out there and play straight away. That's what I'd do, and the same as a coach. I want to. I want to be in the next game. And I told about why I made some of the changes around the, the, the two six-day turnarounds. Um, um, we'd rather be in the game on, on Saturday night, not Friday night, but we're in Friday night. So we're, we're straight into that contest. Um, I'm excited about the development this team has made. I'm, I'm excited about the way the team has dealt with some tough situations. Um, really proud of the growth that the players have, have made as a group. Um, and I can't wait for Friday night. And then post-Friday... I'll then have a proper debrief of everything and make sure there's a proper plan for the next for the next period. Hi Owen. <clears throat> Hi Owen. Sorry. Uh, sorry to be uh, asking another question about Tom, but it's pretty evident how strongly you feel about this yourself. Is it fair to say that there is a strong view throughout the squad on this? That is there just a bit a lot of unhappiness amongst the whole group about how this all is playing out? At the moment, no. Look, I mean, I understand why there's all these questions about this at the moment, um, and we we wanted, um, I guess, people to know our, our support of our support of Tom. But it's not something that we've been um, talking about constantly, as as Steve's talked about with with Tom himself. He he wants to he wants to uh get involved in this contest on friday uh, it's his 50th cap uh, it's something that it's a it's an unbelievably proud week for for him and it's a, it's going to be the same for a few for for a, a couple of a couple of others as well um obviously ben's ben's um ben's last game as well so we want to make sure that this week is about doing doing them proud this week as we said we, we want to we want to play we want to represent the the shirt properly. Um, we want to we want to make sure we 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 make the fans proud again, hopefully. And um, we, as I said, we've got motivation all over, and that's that's the sort of stuff we've been looking looking forward to. And, and can I just ask, when, when you talk about support from yourself or, or widely amongst the squad, <laughs> what does support look like? Is it more conversations or, or, or go, you know anything? In particular, or is actually going the other way and trying to create a sense of normality, despite noise going on. There's always there's always uh, a sense of normality within a within a rugby team. Um, if uh, <laughs> they bring you back down to earth, if there's not pretty quickly, normally. Um, so there's there's always there's always that here, and I'm, I'm sure he's around he's around a lot of his mates and. Uh, as I said, um, people will do that in, the, in their own different ways. People support in, in different ways also. Um, but um, I hope, he, as I said, I hope the people around him and, and he knows that, that this team backs him all the way. Steve, um, uh, rugby's been criticised for quite a few years for, for, for not being exciting, for, for being boring. This tournament has, we've seen some absolutely spectacular games, one of which... You, you, your team took part in on the weekend. Um, are you detached enough to, to uh, work out whether the game has become a little bit freer and people have had more options with, with the ball in hand and in attack during the tournament? Yeah, so um, clear, clearly you're right. My, my focus is upon the team, but I love rugby and I want, want this to be an, this World Cup to be an in, incredible spectacle of rugby um, to celebrate our great sport now I think there's been some really encouraging development, encouraging developments in the game and one I'd pay particular attention to is, is the, the, the gap between tier 1 and tier 2 and how that's closed and how many of the games you've talked about are actually involving tier 2 teams we experienced it ourselves in um, 
our game against Fiji in particular, and you'd also talk about our game against Samoa. Those guys have, have got world class players in, in their team, and we've had very tight enthralling encounters I think the supporters have said to me and um, neutrals have said to me um, for, from a coach's point of view it was a bit too close for comfort um, I also enjoyed watching a lot of the other games the way you see the way Portugal have come and played I think you see a tournament that's been a bit different to previous World Cups um, and I think Friday night's going to be an interesting game as, as, is, as is Saturday night Thanks so much, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.